Hello everyone and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully. Um, this is a knitting update and I don't do these every episode um, to tell you what I've been knitting but I just uh, completed one large project, a sweater for Rick, and I'm just starting another sweater for myself. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about um, those two projects today. Uh, so you may, if you've been watching, um, you may have tuned in for the striped sweater introduction when I was designing a new sweater for Rick. And that project's now complete, and it turned out really well. I'm very pleased with the fit. Um, I think the color combinations work really well on him, and um, he's already gotten a lot of compliments. We went to the grocery store the other day, and a couple of our um, friends work at our local cooperative market, and we're sort of ooing and aahing um, over it and coming up to ask me questions about it. So um, even though I, I kind of look at it as a pretty basic sweater, it was a raglan um, knit off of Barbara Walker's recipe, um, pretty simple construction, not a lot of muss and fuss, um, you know, it, it, it looks really, really good. Um, so that was nice to hear uh, those compliments and Rick's really pleased with it, which is the main thing. So I'm really glad, I'm really glad you like it. Um, the uh, gauge I was a little bit worried about um, when I was knitting it. It seemed quite tight when uh, he was trying it on. Um, but I had knit with that yarn before I'd made socks and the socks ended up kind of growing um, once they were washed. So I knew that yarn was gonna relax. I just had to have faith. Um, and and it did, it, it grew a little bit and it relaxed. Um, and I think that's one of the most important things about blocking um, your knitted work, especially for garments, is that you are going to get a completely different fit once you wash your garment. So I'm a big advocate of blocking, not just for things like lace that really need it, but um, almost any garment or accessory I will block um, just so the thing can relax and, and get into its final, um, final shape. Um, I figure you're going to have to wash it at some point, so why not find out that information as soon as you finish knitting it rather than waiting months and then washing it and having some weird surprise surprise happen. Um, I did do one modification to the sweater from kind of the brief. Uh, I had talked it over with Rick and said, you know, what style do you want? He had picked stripes um, and he said he wanted a rolled neckline and I really don't like rolled necklines on sweaters. I think they look unfinished because you see that you end up seeing the inside of the fabric. Um, so I did the cuffs and the base in a one by one rib and I just continue that for the, the collar on the sweater and I think it looks really good and Rick's happy with the fit of that as well. So I was glad he um, let me make that change um, to his request. So um, yeah, I'll link to in the show notes I'll, for this episode, I'll link to um, the more detailed episode where I talk about designing that sweater and um, kind of figuring out color choices. Um, so moving on from that, I have just this morning cast on for my next sweater. You can see the, the cuff that I just started here. Um, this is a sweater that pattern that's been out for a number of years. Um, I tend not to really knit on trend too much. I tend to kind of just look through and pick um, what I'm interested in at the moment. And this is a sweater um, designed by a UK designer. Her name is Kate Davies. Um, she makes really beautiful kind of classic silhouettes. She does some interesting design things that are um, quite creative, but I would still kind of put her in a classic style of design. I, I think a Kate Davies garment, if you made it, you would want to wear it for, you know, for the rest of your life, for, for decades. It wouldn't really go out of style. Um, so anyway, this one's called Owls, and I'll just show you her sketch. This is from the pattern. Um, this is just a really basic pullover. It's knit in stockinette, and then it just has this little detail around um, the yoke of these cabled owls. Um, and I'm going to knit it in Jill Draper's Make Stuff um, Empire, um, which I'll talk about in just a second, but I just love this yarn. Um, it's so springy and bouncy. So um, I was I was looking to match. I had gotten this uh, yarn from Jill, and I was looking to match and find a good pattern that wasn't too complicated um, in terms of design elements, so that the yarn itself would really um, 
be the center of attention for the sweater. Um, so Kate is, like I said, a UK designer. She um, writes her patterns in a little bit different style than I'm used to. I've knit a lot of US published patterns. So um, opening it up and seeing uh, like a list of sizes like this, rather than um, a schematic with the sizes drawn in was a little different for me. And there's a few other quirks um, there. I don't think they're bad. I just think I'm not used to it. So, um, <laughs> so that's been, um, interesting getting going on this. Um, but I know that her stuff is very, you know, it's well edited. Um, she takes great care to make sure things are correct. So I'm sure I'm in good hands with that. And I'm looking forward to doing um, a pattern with her finally. I, I read her blog. She brought blogs really regularly and she does these interesting long form pieces, um, articles. Um, so I'll link to her blog as well. Her husband also does incredible photography if you're into, um, scenery of the Scottish landscape or, or whatever. Um, they do a really nice job. Anyway, looking forward to that. Um, so to talk about the yarn again for a second. So Jill uh, Draper, if you're not familiar with her, she's an independent yarn dyer and designer, um, yarn designer. She lives in upstate New York near Rhinebeck. Um, and when I say that she's an independent dyer and yarn designer, I mean that she actually designs the yarns. So she's not someone who just buys in bulk yarn bases from wherever and dyes them. She actually, you know, has relationships with local farmers, picks out specific breeds or specific fleeces for the style of yarn that she wants to make. And she works with the mill um, to design the type of yarn that she wants to do. Um, so she's very heavily involved from sheep to skein and it really shows in the finished product um, because she considers herself um, someone who designs yarns for sweater making. And so regardless of whether it's a, you know, a crunchy, sheepy, rustic wool or a softer, springy um, yarn, um, her yarns are designed to hold up, to show stitch uh, patterns really well, to not, not pill, to not sag and bag out on you. Um, and I really appreciate that because if you're gonna invest a bunch of money and a bunch of time knitting something like a sweater, you want it to continue to look really nice, of course, over the years and over the washings. So um, this is her yarn, it's called Empire and it's named after the Empire State, but it's also named kind of after the size of the put up. Um, this is less than half of one skein of an empire. Um, and it's almost two pounds of yarn. It's 1.7 pounds of yarn in one skein. And so it's a sweater's worth of yarn all at once. Um, so only you have to buy one skein. Um, and the empire is made from a breed of sheep called Rambouillet. They're known as a French uh, Merino, um, based on the, the ancient Merino stock. And it's a very springy yarn. So if I do this, you can see that there's a lot of elasticity there. And part of that's from the breed itself, but it's also partially, again, from Jill's design of this yarn. This is a four ply. If I untwist it, you might be able to see that there's four individual threads there. Um, and it's super, um, super twisty. So the, the plies are plied together with a lot of energy in them. And that again, creates a springiness. It also gives a lot of strength to a yarn. So final breeds, um, I'm not actually a fan of knitting with things like Merino because they tend to be really soft and tender and delicate and they'll, they'll split on you. They can pill really easily. I have um, that, gray, that gray lace sweater I knit. Um, while it's beautiful, it's already starting to pill just a little bit. So I tend to stay away from this kind of yarn, but um, I know that, that Jill's put a lot of, you know, science behind her designs. And so I have high hopes this is gonna stand up um, for a long time. It is incredibly soft um, and it's a, nice, it's a nice yarn to knit with. The other thing about fine wool breeze uh, like Rambouillet and Merino is they kind of feel cottony. Um, and Jill even describes this yarn that way on her, uh, on her listing for it. Um, and I find that can kind of dry my hands out and not be as pleasant to knit with sometimes. 
Um, but so far, and I've only done this much, um, this is quite nice because it's got that spring to it. So it's not, it's not just a limp noodle. It actually has some energy um, and it's got a nice bouncy feel while you're knitting. Um, the other thing I really like about this yarn is that although it's a dark red, it is tonal. So I don't know if you can see, but it's got purple and pink um, and dark and light spots throughout it. So again, I wanted just something, the sweater that I picked is mostly stockinette so that it will really show off the tonal variation. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm up to. Um, I, I like to start, so this sweater's knit um, from the bottom up. It's a construction that I enjoy. It's quite easy. Um, the, the sweater I'm wearing it was knit the same way. So you knit from the cuffs and from the bottom hem up, you join the sleeves at the yoke to the body, and then you knit the yoke in one piece around and around. So I like this uh, construction method because it's pretty simple and um, it, it's seamless. Um, the only seams you have to worry about are the um, seams under the underarms. Um, you don't have to sew anything up the sides. You don't have to piece things together. Um, and for someone with my physique and build, um, you know, the, it, it's not going to be a real shaped fitted sweater, but that's fine for me. I, I prefer more of an A-line body on my sweaters anyway. They're more flattering for me. So um, I'm not worried about, you know, not having that seam um, kind of construction for, for like a close fit. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to, to knitting this sweater, making some progress on it. Um, oh, the other thing I was going to say um, about why I've started with a sleeve is that I found I have slightly different gauge on knitting in the round versus knitting flat. Um, and I think that's pretty common. So um, instead of knitting a flat square swatch to test my gauge, it makes the most sense to me to just knit part of a sleeve and wash that and then use that as your swatch. Because you're gonna have to knit in the round anyway to get an accurate gauge measurement um, for a piece worked in the round. So why not just start with your sleeve? I'm not gonna knit the whole sleeve. I'll probably knit you know five or six inches and then put it on waist yarn, wash it, and see how it's going with the gauge. Um, the other thing I'm excited about is my new, new to me, Ackerworks um, gauge swatch measuring tool. Um, so this was a gift, Rick got this for me for Christmas this year. And what I like about it is it is clear, so you can kind of see the fabric um, behind it. It's got this great little window, so you can measure row gauge and, um, What's that row gauge and width gauge, stitch gauge, I guess, at the same time. And it has these little teeth. And what the teeth do is that they, they kind of bite into your fabric a little bit so that you can't pull and stretch your swatch out of shape and trick yourself into thinking that you got gauge when you really didn't. So this is like an honesty measuring device. You really have to, to face up to whatever gauge um, you're reading in the window. And that's really good because I think a lot of us, you know, will kind of press our swatch out and flatten it a little bit to make sure that we got gauge when really all that stretching and pressing is um, throwing off our calculation. So I'm looking forward to using this. Um, and yeah, I will, um, I don't know exactly when I'm going to finish this sweater. I'm hoping in time for the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival in May. So it's early mid-February now. And... That gives me about two and a half months to do the sweater. Um, because it is an Aran weight yarn, it's knit on 10 and a half inch needles. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to finish this without a problem. Um, but you know, famous last words, right? Um, so we'll see. So uh, I'll give you an update on what I'm knitting periodically. Um, I, again, if you've been watching for a while, you know that this isn't something that I do every week. Um, I like to mix it up a little bit more than that. But um, I just wanted to check in, let you know about my progress, and also let you know about some great designers and yarns that I'm excited to work with. So thanks again for joining me, and uh, let me know what you're working on. Um, leave a comment below or a link um, to your Ravelry page. I'd love to see what you have going on in progress.